Welcome home, Jin. Hey, Akos. I hear the Aegis awakened. Nasty shock for you? Or was it? Of course, my script showed how everything would play out from the start. Sure, you say that once it's all over and done with. It's easy to act smug when hindsight's on your side. Shut your mouth, Abrona. I'm shaking to my core. Where are the other two? Mikhail's inspecting the Ardanian factory. And my beloved sister is out hunting, as always. I'm sure she'll have found plenty of drivers to chew up and spit out by now. She likes to hunt, all right. Not sure we can use all of those core crystals, though. Do we know where the Aegis is right now? Have no fear, Jin. Of course we know her whereabouts. Abrona? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It seems they're currently traveling away from the urban area of Gormont. Leaving the town? But there's nothing out that way. Perhaps they're on their way out of Gormont itself. Oh, and... What? It seems a certain shipment has set out. The core crystals heading to Indol for cleansing, huh? How pious of them. Shall we handle them? I can deal with that myself. You concentrate on the Aegis. Understood. Well, I am looking forward to clapping eyes on the Aegis. By the way, what of Nia? You know where she is? Yes. Look, this dot here. Without a doubt, this is Dromark's wavelength. It seems they're traveling together with the Aegis. With the Aegis? Huh. Do as you see fit. Understood. You don't need to ask me twice. Right then. We're gonna take the Monoceros. Hmm. As you wish. Hey. Don't do anything too reckless. What is that? A Cloud Sea compass. A must-have for salvagers. It's sort of a map of the Cloud Sea. If you do this, and this... What's the date today? Um... Amathotober 5th, 4058. Okay. So now we put the date in. See? Oh, this is very clever. Looks like Gormot. Is the closest country to the World Tree right now? All we need is a ship. The army has every ship in town in its grip. <sighs> We're kind of stuck. Seems that way. Sorry, I'm no use now. I know, I know. But I'm all out of ideas. Rex Rex needs ship? <gasps> Tora, I have good idea! You do? There is shipbuilder living at Gormot Titan's Bum Bum. Old friend of Tora's Grampy Pon, he called Umon. Maybe he help if we tell him what's what. Sure, it's worth a shot. Let's get going. Hey, Tora. The place where this Umon guy lives isn't affected by the Cloud Sea Tides, is it? Hmm? Why Rex Rex ask? Well, I noticed that the Cloud Sea's been pretty low ever since we went off to save Nia. It's still low now, right? I was wondering that depending on the situation, we might be forced to find a different route. Rex has a point, the Cloud Sea Tides have a marked effect on the areas you are about to traverse. Sometimes the Cloud Sea may allow you to swim to places that were once out of reach, but equally, it can submerge previously reachable areas halting your progress. Exactly, so I was wondering whether we need to worry about any of that where we're going now. That makes sense. But it is no problem. Path to Shipyard of Uman, not affected by Cloud Sea at all. That's good to know. If it was somewhere we could only reach at high tide, we'd have to rest up somewhere until the clouds rise. That doesn't sound so bad to me. Frankly, I'd welcome a well-earned rest at an inn while we wait for the tide to change. No offense, Rex, but your helmet isn't always the most comfortable abode. Yes, yes, you, oh, you can always have a stretch and lie down next time where it visit an inn at Torigoth. For now, though, we go to Shipyard of Uman! 
You now have the option to take long rests at lodging facilities. This lets you rest until the tides of the Cloud Sea have shifted. If you ever find that your way is blocked due to the shifting tides of the Cloud Sea, then just go back and have a long rest, whether you're tired or not. Since the tides of the Cloud Sea change every time you have a long rest, it's wise to check the Cloud Sea status in the environmental information display first. Oh, and you should bear in mind that it's not possible to take a long rest at every single lodging facility in all rest. <sighs> Checkout time just keeps getting earlier and earlier with each year. But you, could certainly ch you certainly can at the one in Torigoth, which is just as well because Torigoth is quite sensitive to the comings and goings of the Cloud Sea. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time, we conquered Gormont, or at least, uh, drove back the strongest driver in the Empire, uh, from doing anything untoward in Gormont for a while. Uh, that was enough. This time, we are gonna throw the bad guys off of our trail so hard, because so many things have opened up all around the world. There are new side quests available, there are new really important things available, and there's also possibly new treasures that we can grab, so let's get started. Being up front with you from here on out, this is going to be primarily a side questy video. But the content that we're going to be going over has to do with optional party members that we're going to be obtaining, so that's pretty important, wouldn't you say? Starting off, I'm going to be showing by far the most important thing that I recommend you go and grab at this point in time. DLC Bladeless Distribution 2. A firecracker of a gal. We're going to Bower Lounge, not Bower Lounge, Bower Lounge. I did not have that name right, so thanks to those who corrected me on it. My sheltered Americanness so, has been showing with my pronunciations, but not to fear, I'm not one of the 90% of my country that has never left it. I've actually been to other countries before. Hurry scurry. Ah, there are friends. Me search high and low in all places in between for you. Please make acquaintance of Hurry Scurry, top rated courier service in some places in all rest. Hurry Scurry come bearing special delivery of Fonset sender name of Corinne. Thanks. Friends curious about contents of package? Hurry Scurry know exactly what in is inside. Kirk fished up this pretty looking stone from Cloud Sea. We thought you might like it. That's what letter reads. Incidentally, is probably worth mention, pretty looking stone actually referred to core crystal. Mimi, Hurry Scurry did nothing wrong! Why if friends look at me like commit conduct unbecoming of delivery pawn? Alright, Hurry Scurry spill beans. Me thought if delivery was food on verge of spoilage, would have to gobble up. But friends are to blame here! Would not have happened if not wandering from place to place whole time! Anyway, uh, friends should be taking core crystal. Ebullient core crystal? I'm looking up the pronunciation of this one after what I just said. It means cheerful and full of energy, and it's pronounced ebullient. Okay, that take care of that. Be sure to rate Hurry Scurry at least four and a half stars. That's pretty nice. So this actually comes from Rex's hometown. They sent us a gift. And because Rex is just such an upstanding awesome guy and notices that Nia does not have a second blade of her own, we're going to awaken this now and give it to her. She's able to freely bond with core crystals, but with added out, this is what I want to give her. So cute! <laughs> so good! And I don't think that she's, you know, too extra or anything like that. She's great the way she is. We're gonna set this right away on Aenea's second slot, and we're gonna be seeing her in action in not too much time. Crossette has three Oxcore slots. Right away, we're gonna go with Art Stealth. 
as she is a healer, and we don't want Nia getting too much of that. Oh man, we could really go all out here. Dromark uh, doesn't have any ox cores on, does he? No, he doesn't. We need to go to the ox core shop and refine some of these things. I picked up a Hunter's Chemistry earlier, so that'd be good. As for the core chip, she's gonna take our other Amethyst. Increasing luck by 50 is such a good, good thing for her to have. Chancy Ball. Fitting, because I'm hoping for better chances on things. Enhance Arts. Crescent is the first bit ball that we're using, a pretty healing-oriented weapon class. I'm gonna switch in Atomic Bomber right away. I also want Dolphin Spin because HP potions are a huge part of using this one. While not directly related to Crosset, I'm gonna switch back in Rolling Smash and we'll level up Sword Bash. And I guess we'll also level up Rolling Smash. <laughs> Azami can have Wild Volley. We'll cap off Dromark here. And Tora, you can have level two for your arts as well. We're gonna go buy from Bonbon. Bon. Never noticed your simply adorable name and you even look the part. I wanna buy, let's buy a few Narsapair jellies here. Just cause they're so good to have. Just behind Honeycomb Sweets is Noodler's Delight, a shop that I haven't gone to yet. Meh meh, so busy, customers everywhere. Zuzu sells super popular noodle soup, even to merchants that visit Argentum. But right now, too many customers, so Zuzu too busy to serve more soup. If friends want famous noodle soup, come at very late hours when less customers. We don't gotta play the song of time, just go into the menu, change the time, and we'll go to 1 a.m. Looking a lot less busy, only the salary men with no lives of their own to go home to are here. Friend quite sharp to come here at night when not much visitors. Friend buy famous noodle soup, one taste, and never able to stop eating. Argentum noodle soup gives an HP damage, uh, gives a, um, a barrier when at max HP. Not a good effect, but I still would like to buy one. I did this to show that Crossette. I have a real sweet tooth. There is no better game to have a real sweet tooth in. You represent me so hard as one who just can't stop eating sweets. She gets a bonus from desserts. Already looking good. Good food always makes me feel like a new blade. And she gets a bonus from staple foods as well. Nia's favorite item. The creamy orange paratha is a staple food and has an ungodly effect on it. Isn't that great? The sunshine pie that we made from that side quest a little while ago. This is delicious. Oh my gosh, Pyra, what is this? <laughs> she even acknowledges that Pyra made it. Attention to detail, I love it. But we're gonna put on the creamy orange paratha because that's the item that we should be having under all circumstances. Mm. If you just want as many rare blades as possible, go to DLC Bladeless Distribution 3 and grab this item, a boy of two swords. In Goldmouth Return Port, there will be a Nopon that'll give you a core crystal for another rare blade. I'm gonna skip out on this one because I think that our party is growing in size at a decent pace and I'd like to have time to go over everyone. And I also don't think that this character is particularly optimal for right now, but oh boy, is he powerful. Oh boy, is he powerful. I also don't think there's a such thing as a bad driver for this blade, so just whoever needs one can have him. Remember all those things I said about Dromark? Crosset has much better skills, so we're gonna put her in slot one so that she's the default when Nia's controlled by the AI. I know, Dromark's cool. It's just, Crosset's a lot better in battle, and you don't want to have Dromark out if you can avoid it. Back in Torgoth, we're just gonna waltz into town like we own the place. New wanted posters. Nah, they don't actually mean anything. They say the exact same thing as before and they finally got Nia's mugshot right. I guess that's, uh, I guess they're more inclined to get details on you right when you take out the flame bringer. Do you guys have new things to say? One of the secrets of Gormati Woodcraft is puzzle tree wood. Wow, a uh, showy, showy girl there. Let's hear the details. The rings of a puzzle tree wood's form is in the shape of a puzzle. Fun to play with as is, but also, and also very easy to process. Here in Gormont, we use puzzle tree wood for everything from grand houses to tiny accessories. I don't know how we'd get by without the stuff. That's pretty neat. You can gather puzzle tree wood from lots of trees around here, so try collecting it, it might come in handy. I wanna know what these soldiers have to say. We've been trying to recruit drivers here for some, uh, recruit drivers for some time now, but I've yet to clap eyes on a blade with a unique ability. I'm talking about blades that excel in fortitude or focus or have specialized field of knowledge. It seems the chances of meeting such exceptional individuals are few and far between. But I expect if you stick it out and keep trying, sooner or later, you'll end up resonating with a winner. 
It's kind of funny to me how much these soldiers don't really seem to care about us wanted criminals, but I don't know, Morag seemed kind of impressed with us. Maybe she pulled some strings and wasn't really interested in reprimanding us, so she called off her dogs. That's all I got. We'll go ahead and process these Hustle Hyacinths to make a Hunter's Chemistry. Fusion Combo up one sounds great, boosting the effects by 10%. And we can even make multiples of these, heck yeah. Indoor attack up, I've said my praises of. I could make a fast blade switch. We need one of each of these items, including some from salvaging. I'll snag it, just in case we have a blade that has a really slow cooldown time that I want. Blade combo boost. That's pretty easy to make. I should take as many indoor attack ups as I can make. Crossette has art stealth one. I've already gone over my rationale of this. Fusion combo up one. She has a break art as well as some good specials. We're gonna be seeing loads of fusion combos with her. Good effect. And I was gonna go with fast blade switch one to make her easy to switch back to if we ever need to. But if I'm controlling her, we should go with blade combo boost because why would I ever switch off of her for Dromark? I'm sorry. My treatment of you is not gonna get any better, by the way. You're gonna take the Hunter's Chemistry because of that rare quirk where it works on all of your blades if it's just equipped on one of you. So you can have Hunter's Chemistry so that Crossette doesn't have to use up one of her three slots on that. I suppose you can take an Art Stealth as well, just to make Nia more consistent. Pyra can say goodbye to Hunter's Chemistry 1 in favor of Blade Combo Boost, and then Hunter's Chemistry 1 can go on our common here. He has a name, it's Sword Eye. Ganon and his minions have seized the island of Soridai. The sad existence I lead means that'll make me remember. Before we truly get started, I thought we'd check in on the infant Arden once more, as we have tons more collectibles that he can eat. No, we don't. Well, crap. We'll save him for later. Millie, did you see anybody running by here after knocking over a water tower for no apparent reason? It's gonna be okay, Armu, you're safe now. Something wrong. No, we are not okay. All the Armu got super scared when that water tower fell over, and the grazing lands got all mush squishy and mushy. It's all Torna's fault. If they're gonna call for backup, they should do it more quiet-like. There, there, little Armu. It's gonna be okay. Well, darn, I've made the Armu feel a little awkward. There's no coming back from that. Thankfully, the items for the Infant Arden are pretty easy to find. A lot of them are around here. Heck, the Hot Orange is a common collectible on Kloom Farm, so it's definitely farmable. And it just so happens that Kloom Farm is the site of our first quest of the day. Not Umon, but Nomon. <laughs> Why not grow? Something bothering, friend. Granny Pond, leave Veg Veg seeds to Nomon. So Nomon want to grow new Veg Veg. Wow, pretty impressive. But no, Veg Veg so delicate, not want to grow for Nomon. Well, in perfect world, Nomon give Veg Veg lots of fertilizer. But Nomon just getting started, have no Veg Veg to sell, cannot afford expensive poo poo. Maybe it best if Nomon give up, with apologies to Granny Pawn. Tora want to help out. Should be easy for Tora and friends. Meh, friends help Nomon. Yippee, Nomon's super happy. When veg veg grow, friends first in line to taste. If friends find thing that work as fertilizer, give Nomon shout. Tora get it. And if thing nutritious, well, then we need not get so many. Grow Little Vegetables is on the agenda for today. This is similar to the, um, to the Infant Arden. It's called theming. We can use all sorts of different items as fertilizer, and generally speaking, if it's a rare item, it might be worth more points than, say, a common item. We can just give him all sorts of assortments of items. Uh, we have way too many tree crabs, so we can just have a lot of those. We turn in these items from pretty much any source at all. I've shown you on screen where to get each of them, but you probably have enough. Nutrition level now perfect. No mom, thank friends. Now we leave Veg Veg to grow big. Friends have a na naparoo, then come see. My how convenient it is that we've just gained the ability to pass time by resting in an inn. Koidwig Inn. I'll have you know this place isn't a short rest or even a long rest, but all rest. 
I slept like a baby. Go check out the inside of the inn. There's a painting of a place we've never seen and uh, no rooms. What are we sleeping in a hallway on a bench? Nah, hotels have got these things called doors. You gotta you gotta look out for those. Your eggplants! Hi there. <laughs> Why this unforeseen growth? Veg veg look all weird, have weird color skin. Why? Why? No man already try bite, it not taste like food at all! Hmm, this is awkward, what should we do? Work of Nomon, impeccable! Fertilizer of friends, spectacular! In which case can only be fault of... Patch of Grout. Nomon checks soil condition while friends look for possible explanation around area. We'll give it our best shot. Please, Matt, some some of Nomon feel funny. I thought he was gonna blame us for all this mess, not gonna lie. I'm kinda proud of him that he uh, blamed the dirt instead of himself, instead of blaming us. Uh, how low the bar has been set by these Nopon. That's the thing about Nopon! I've seen like a lot of people kinda having culture shock from this. Nopon are always either like the seediest, greediest people, and if they're not that, they have a super tragic and sad backstory like Tora does. There's never any just happy Nopon anywhere. This is... Apparently some kind of connection between this. This is our first introduction of poisonous Kool-Aid. Any sort of polluted water will hurt you over time. Your HP regenerates naturally outside of battle, but not while taking damage, so be careful. You can die from this. In order to get through it, we have a skip travel point inside the Torigoth relay base. Off we go. What will we find? Now, I gotta talk about this. I remember the first time that I ever saw one of those drain pipes just dumping gallons and gallons of poison into the ocean every second. I remember I looked at that as a kid and I thought like, wow, isn't that illegal? And I was stunned to find out when it wasn't. Like, how is that allowed? Like, really, like, how can companies do that? It's just, it kind of makes me sick. And like, whenever you see it in the ocean, you just see like dead fish bobbing up and down and everything like that. At least the one I saw was like that. I remember just being so distraught when I saw that for the first time as a kid, and that image has stuck with me all this time, and it's still what I think about whenever I see anything like it. I don't know, it's just, it's one of those things that is normally accepted in the world for some reason that I just find utterly disgusting. Maybe I just love the ocean a lot, and it's always been a really magical place for me, so I just hate to see it treated like that. But it's always just been something that stood out to me that I don't really ever hear anybody talk about. Drop down, after turning that off, I wish I could just be the one to turn off one of those valves for good if a factory was ever shutting down. It would actually mean a lot to me. I'm, I'm not kidding, it just, it was that impactful on me as a child to see something like that. Uh, we'll go down here, we'll pick up a treasure trove, see? There is lots of money to be found in being environmentally friendly! That you get one time and stop profiting off of forever. I'm not making my case here. Oh jeez, level 40 enemies, ugh. Hey, you nugby. That water tower is well good and busted now. Uh, where? Oh, uh, there's not really any trace of it, is there? I thought there were gonna be broken support beams. Thankfully, we can get water for the moment by drawing wa water. Thankfully, we can get by for the moment by drawing water from Cooley Lake. But some of the lakes around here are contaminated, so I'm a little worried about how it'll affect our crops. What use is it having the Empire's strongest driver around when you can't even do anything when villains attack? I sure hope the Ardanian army catches whoever was responsible for this mess. Hmm. Everyone around here is so nice and loves their home so much and it makes things so awkward for us. I wish they'd knock it off. Listen, friends, listen. Soil from Patch was a tasty blick. Now it yum yum. What? Polluted water was flowing from Ardanian base? Meh. So Nomon not able to grow veg veg was the fault of more Ardane. They make Nomon sell fruits of hard labor for tiny price, and this is how they show gratitude? Most terrible. Ah, Nomon, sorry. Is no point complaining to friends. Friends not in wrong here. You're a nice upstanding dude compared to what I thought you were gonna be based on your tone. Tora, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, I sorry too. Nomon a okay, when going to, when going get tough of Nopon get going, yes, is saying of Granny Pon. So Nomon plant new seeds and patch. Nomon need friends again to help, help, uh, help with fertilizer thing again. Please and thank you. Once again, place to dump our collectibles. We saw that the tree crabs worked well before. You can have some clarity moss. Oh, that's 20. Sure, 
That, and then two tree crabs to cap it off. I just don't want to use too much of any one material because you never know when an ox core is going to need it. Nutrition level now perfect. No mon, thank friends. Now we leave veg veg to grow. Friends have Naparoo. Then come see. I'm not a fan of all the nap on words, but Naparoo is a pretty good one. You know what the best one is though? Master Pond. <laughs> As someone who's been with the series for a long time and seen a lot of nop on -isms and heard like Dada Pond, Mama Pond, Grampy Pond, Granny Pond, and all that, when we actually had a nop on building like a robot servant, <laughs> hearing Master Pond just, it got me real well. I'm also pretty sure that we can just do a short rest and still be fine. I slept like a log and I'm ready to face the day. Mm, nice cat nap. Hello! Meh! <laughs> Friends, look, just look. Granny Pond leaves seeds to Nomon, say she want to grow more and more delicious foods. Dream of Granny Pond now come to, to fruition on Veg Patch of Nomon. Nomon named this Veg Veg Napa Pomuli. Wow, pretty impressive. Nomon know he say he let friends have first taste, but see, Nomon could not wait to take bite. Bite of mouth drooling deliciousness makes Nomon feel ten years younger. Nomon feel Granny Pond smiling from far away. Could not do this without help of friends. Many kudos. I guess that's solved then. All thanks to your hard work, Nia. However, Nomon not have enough to sell. Still not financially solvent. Nomon sorry, but can only give friends Napa Pomuli as thanks. Thanks. Is okay? Is really okay? Oh yes, Nomon just remember. If friends come help again, Nomon give Napa Pamuli that friends help grow. Tora get it. So if friends ever crave Napa Pamuli, come see old Nomon. I can't believe they referenced this. But Napa Pamuli is a reference to Xenoblade Chronicles X. It is the unfunny vegetable that Tatsu gets confused through throughout that entire game. It did not have a canon name until Xenoblade Chronicles 2, even though it's in a few cutscenes in that game. Interesting. One of the vegetables is sentient. Oh, and Crossette has no relation to the female character named Cross in Xenoblade Chronicles X. I swear it was one of the most common questions I've gotten from people after they got this DLC. Oh! Poppy and Pyra got their level 3, and Crossette got her level 2. And Sordai got a level up. Tora got an idea level. Doesn't that just sound useless and a half? Well, no. Idea stats actually do something else besides influence core crystal awakening chances, and they don't even tell you that it does this. The corresponding elements to that idea level have their damage I increased 5% per level. That's what I'll wield this power to protect my... Sordai, oh, Sordai's up to level four? Stronger by the day, it seems. Yikes, that's pretty, pretty good. These seem pretty easy to raise up as well. Common blades usually are. New abilities acquired. We gotta make a date out of filling in these new slots on these charts, but I came over here to go to the ox core shop, not to learn 17 new skills. HP attack boost. Increases damage dealt by 15% when HP is 90% or higher. Right away, I recommend this for Crossette. Nia doesn't take much damage. Crossette's a healer. Not gonna be low on health that often. We'll ditch the art stealth for that one. And the accessory we got was the Apprentice Vam Braces. Increases damage dealt to higher leveled enemies by 20%. This is a damn good accessory on Rex if you ever wanna try out some kind of extra challenge. In case you're wondering, there is a material called Napa Pamuli, but he doesn't actually give you one. That's just flavor text that he's giving you a meal whenever you stop by. Isn't it great we can get all this stuff right out of the ground? Crosset, you make it easier to get the materials for the Arden. I routed this game better than I thought. <sighs> Hard work producing Napa Pamuli. If friends have time, would be much appreciated if could help out. I mean, we produce large batch and make big earnings. And then we erect great Napa Pamuli Palace, even bigger than Consulate. Oh, Poppy got Napa on Wisdom level two from that. That's gotten from talking to uh, enough Nopon. Uh, this can be done by just, this can be grinded very quickly by finding two Nopon next to each other and switching back and forth by talking to them. Consecutive talkings to the same Nopon don't count. And this also counts for Shopkeeper Nopon, which back in Argentum, there's a lot of Shopkeeper Nopon around there. 
Very easy skill to level up, but we just passively did it without needing to grind it. Next up, it's time for everyone's favorite alienating aspect of Xenoblade Chronicles 2! Crappy ass tutorials! Woo! <sighs> all right, all right, all right. The informant. We were briefly briefed on how this guy works. Maximum affinity. Spend 720G to find out what that is and how it works. Utilizing the elements. Being taught about how elemental weaknesses work. 800G. Affinity benefits. Knowing what affinity even does for you in battle. 640. Ambushing enemies. Okay, that one's not too vital, I guess. Hidden landmarks. Secret areas are hidden landmarks. You should look for them everywhere. 480G down the toilet. Not all of them are bad. But number of arts. I, I want I genuinely want to know what this actually says. Drivers can learn four arts per weapon. Yeah, we start with four arts per weapon. And you choose from three in battle. Yeah, we have no choice but to have three. These are pretty bad tutorials, but among the bad tutorials are things that you actually want to know and you have to buy them. When the game makes so little effort to explain things. I don't get why we don't have some kind of tutorial menu where you can just look up terms as you want to know more about them or something. I don't get it. But the secondary reason I wanted to come here next to some good old fashioned daily complaining about the tutorials was a gourmati recipe. That adds the pan fried tartari to Pyrus cooking repertoire. You wanna know the worst thing? Idea. The thing that gets the, that this tutorial NPC even more on my bad side? Pan fried tartari needs dusk bamboo and mooka flour. We are several major areas away from being able to get these items at all, so it was a colossal waste of money. But I just wanted it so that I could talk about that and also to say that we will be cooking things as we become able. How about something cooking related we actually can do? By checking Crossette's chart, she wants to speak to Lenka in the Galad residential zone in Goromot with Nia and Pyra in the party. Write down these steps. I wonder what's happened there. We should try to find out. Hey there, little one. What's the matter? My ma and da went out, and they've been gone a long time, and now I'm worried, and, and, and? I got you, little lady. We'll go, we'll go and look for him, okay? No, you don't get it. I'm just really, really hungry now, and when I get hungry, I just get so sad. Oh, I, I see. Well, shall we see what you've got up in the larder? I'm sure we could whip up a quick snap for you if we tried. Would you really? Sure. Shouldn't be too much trouble, right, Nia? No objections here. Okay, come on inside then. Man, inviting in strangers when your parents aren't home all because someone promised you food. Pyra, you're, you're, you're my hero. Oh, her face, her face. Oh, she makes the elven ears and round cheeks work so well for her. I love her from this angle so much. She's so precious. You don't even know, you didn't even know that little girl, but you still went and cooked her up a feast. Oh, it was nothing really. We couldn't have left her crying there. That's our Pyra, always a champion of the people. She sure is, and she shines brighter than any sparkler. Not the comparison I'd have gone with myself, but okay. <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes so that I can be just like my hero someday. Oh, uh, that's nice. Uh, let me know what I can do to help. After you check Crossette's affinity chart, you'll be able to use her cooking skill at Tora's house. Pyra will have to notice me now. No one tell Anel that his favorite blade loves Pyra that much. If we may move over to Crossette's cooking. Pretty much anything becomes edible if you apply enough fire. She's not wrong. Molten salsa. We cannot get all of these materials in the areas that we've been to already, so I'm gonna do a little cheat here and go one level higher up the Argentum Trade Guild than I've gone up to before. Hey, we could not go up here during the tutorial phase as the stairs would have been blocked off. There's some farms up here on the upper decks. Isn't it great we can get all this stuff right out of the ground? And these have the prize that we seek. It's a rare item. So rare that we didn't get it the first time. Those six-eyed freaks are a lot cuter than I thought anything with six eyes could ever be. Nothing. I thought she was a collectible. For, I thought she was a rare collectible for a second. She's a knockoff. 
Yeah, there's a discrimination lecture in there somewhere. Puri leaf cabbage! Wow! Four of them! Uh, I guess it was just clogged and uh, we got it unstuck so it all came rushing out. Molten salsa! Yeah, we'll make that. Sounds right up my alley. In fact, the salsa actually does give an art recharge effect. Not a great one, but it's something and and free if you just gotta gather one resource or something for it. Crossette's agronomy went up from uh, us harvesting enough items. Her ardent cooking can't level up again. Unlike Pyra, who has to buy her recipes from stores or learn them from quests, as we've seen, Crossette gets a new pouch item every time she levels up ardent cooking. Each level corresponds to a better pouch item. We've seen a lot of what Crossette's capable of outside of fights, so how about we actually get into some scraps? Over by the way tree, we got a score to settle. Up there on that rock, sitting proud and majestic against the sunset, thinking about the meaning of life and what he's going to maul for dinner tonight, it's none other than Sad Bernard. And uh, Leo Ferris as well. Okay, yeah, you can uh, Fresh meat, fresh meat. Crossette will cook you up. There's not, not you can turn into food without enough fire or whatever she says. Yes. Oh, Sad Bernard. Oh, my balls got your face on it. Anyway, Crossette is a healer in name only. She's a great example of how roles don't really matter that much. And she's a blade that is made by her skills. Just like the one she idolizes, she has one bad skill. Pyrotechnics raises the entire party's damage to launched enemies. I guess it's not bad, it's just very situational and doesn't come up that much. Two is gathering sparks, increasing damage dealt, her HP potion picked up, and even at level one, this caps at 500% of an increase. This is utterly ridiculous. It actually is now worth it to go run around and pick up HP potions. She has an HP potion art. Uh, you can grab them during her specials. And speaking of her specials, oh ho ho. Her third skill, Alchemy Adept, boosts fusion combo damage when she has a break art. Keep the enemy in break all the time, use your specials, go grab those HP potions while the special's playing out and your walk speed is increased. She is amazing. She really is just, she is an attacker first with healing as, I wouldn't even really say secondary. She is a great healer thanks to having that party healing effect that Dromark has, having a potion art when she actually gains a lot from picking up those potions. I would say that she is an attacker who keeps the party fully healed by just playing normally. Her damage is so good, she's used in speed running from this point forward. So why wasn't I grabbing any HP potions? I was kind of prioritizing the items that the unique monster dropped because when you kill a unique monster for the first time, it's guaranteed to drop every item that it has a chance of dropping on subsequent defeats. Because you get one free instance of every item that it can possibly drop, I wanted to prioritize grabbing them before they disappeared. They can have core crystals and some good ox cores in there. Speaking of which, we're going over by Toragoth to fight Moonlight Elwyn again because it has a chance of dropping an insanely good ox core that we've already gotten. I'd like to get more of it. Now, the problem is that Crossette, she's really strong, but I kind of need a longer fight with enemies that have lots of health to really show how good she is. So Sad Bernard wasn't really a good fit and neither is this thing. We'll get to a long fight with her eventually. I just wanted to kind of show in a basic sense how good she is, but we'll see her fight at her fullest at a later time. I gave it several honest attempts, even getting a 15 second kill once, and it just wouldn't spawn in this item, which kind of doubly makes it lame. This is a renewable source of affinity max attack. An excellent ox core that pairs with Hunter's chemistry very, very well. Pyra in particular loves this thing. Anyway, that's a lot of good items, a lot of good rewards, a lot of exploration, and a new party member fully gone over. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We continue with the last round of side stuff around Toriga. See you guys then.